Well, it used to be paradise and just a short boat ride from the Gold Coast. But residents of this South Stradbroke Island resort say they've been abandoned. And if you look around now, it's like a ghost town. We're being treated like second-class citizens and like trailer park trash. Do you realise how upset these people of are? Or not? It's disgusting. Like I'm in disbelief about how we're being treated, really. Grand Cove Resort opened in 1998 on South Stradbroke Island, just a short boat ride from the Gold Coast. It was a dream of former Mayor and Olympian Ron Clark to create an eco-paradise, funded with $150 million from American billionaire Chuck Feeney and attracting world-class athletes to prepare for the Sydney Olympics. After going into administration in 2011, it's passed through a series of owners and some of the once pristine facilities have fallen into a shocking state of disrepair. Treadmills in the gym have been smashed up, the beach boardwalk is busted and parts of the kids' playground are a no-go zone. I feel like it's like you're walking through Jurassic Park. Maintenance of uh, facilities isn't taken care of. That's really sad. Sarah Skipworth knew that parts of the resort were run down, but she never expected to be left living with no gas or hot water for the past month. To live without the basic services, I feel like it's violating our human rights. She purchased this eco cabin at Coran Cove six months ago for just $65,000. Now everyone in the eco cabins are living without gas since a sudden email was sent a month ago warning of a potential explosion that could damage buildings or even kill. When I received the email, I was really, really scared. I thought my life was at risk at the time. She says guests and staff at the main resort had not even been warned about any danger, leaving the eco cabin residents feeling like second class citizens. My name is Nicole and I'm seven years old. I live at Corrin Cove, South Stradbrook Island with my family and I'm not very happy. Families live in these eco cabins too, like seven year old Nicole and her mum Patricia, <laughs> who has to fill the bath upstairs with boiled water from the kettle for her and younger sister Elena. It started a bit in winter and now it's spring. It's not fair. We haven't had gas for such a long time. How important is it for you guys to get the gas back on here? Well, we use the gas for both hot showers and cooking. So imagine how essential that is. Owners of eco cabins like these pay $10,000 each year in body corporate fees, which also includes water, gas and electricity usage. They say they have regular blackouts including when we visited the island. Third world country, no rights at all. Absolutely disgusting. 63-year-old Judy Williams is legally blind. She tried to come up with her own solution, hooking up a small gas bottle to her main supply, but has just been busted for it by the body corporate. He's come around here um, and deliberately singled me out. Lots of people have temporarily have got these nine kilo gas bottles and he's um, dubbed me in for having a, a legal set up here. Government gas inspectors deemed Judy's setup a potential hazard and disconnected the bottle. What seems to be the problem here today? Uh, in what way? Darren Phillip is a member of the community body corporate and was the one who dobbed in Judy's illegal gas bottle. Do you realise how upset these people are to not, to not have any gas of at the moment? Of course I do. What do you think of the, the situation they're in? Well, it's got to go through the process. It's got to, the body corporates have got to sort it out. It's got to go through the proper process. You just can't come in here and put a gas bottle on. At the time of our visit, residents had been told it could take another two months before the gas is reconnected. They're paying, you know, $10,000 in body corporate fees. They know or, that when they come here. Uh, what are they getting for their $10,000? Well, you we need to refer that to David Rosenbaum, who's the chairman of the CBC. It certainly looks like there's not a lot being spent on maintenance around the place. The community body corporate chairman declined our request for an interview but has since announced gas to the eco cabins will start being reconnected this week 
A spokesperson blamed the delay mostly on the Eco Cabin's own body corporate for failing to pay. The Eco Body Corporate are using the gas as a negotiating tactic in a wider dispute and using the media to seek to harm the community body corporate. There are five body corporates involved on the island with complex court proceedings playing out over millions of dollars in unpaid levies. These individual owners claim all of their levies are paid in full. It's really silly that there's this war between the operator, the developer and the private owners who at the moment are propping up the resort basically through their body corporate fees. This eco cabin owner who wants to be called Nairi says they now hope the state government can help them find a way out of this complicated mess. My fervent hope is that we can get together with the operator and work out a way forward to revitalise the place instead of spending money on, on lawyers and court cases. It's just, it's just crazy. Give up our gas! Stop the harass! They now hope their voices can be heard all the way to Premier Anastasia Palaszczuk's office. Uh, and we want help to restore those services and this beautiful paradise. Give us our gas! Stop the harass! Boy, that's a lot of body corporates. And the community body corporate says the state government requested the affected gas line be decommissioned prior to any new lines being reconnected.